Bobby Slowick is the right choice to be the Tennessee Titans' next head coach. I'm going to tell you why on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, Titans fans. Today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. We are going over my head coaching candidate tier list. I'm going to do tier one, tier two, tier three. Before we get into it, thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen. Each and every day, remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year long, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day. This is the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. So make sure that you get subscribed. I couldn't do it without you guys. Shout out to my everydayers out there. And the show is always free. All I ask for in return is the press of a button. I got a lot of great content coming up for you guys this offseason. We're going to be talking about the coaching hires, not just head coach, OC, DC, cap management, roster management, free agency preview, draft preview. So again, make sure you get subscribed for free daily content on your favorite team. With that being said, we got to dive into my candidate list. And I've told you guys all along, starting out in tier one, and I want to give a shout out to Sean Calderon. My former co-worker over at USA Today, this was his idea. Shout out to him. I'm doing it as well. But Bobby Slowick is my number one top candidate leading in tier one. Let me know who your guys' top candidate is down below. But Bobby Slowick had an incredible performance on Wild Card Weekend against the Cleveland Browns. The Titans scored three points against the Cleveland Browns. The Texans just scored 45. And look, the Texans have better players on offense. But you can't tell me the players are the only difference between three points and 45 points. So Bobby Slowick, my top candidate, and he balled out against the Cleveland Browns in front of the entire world. But it wasn't just his incredible performance against the Cleveland Browns. Bobby Slowick has an incredible resume on its own. Number one, he was on that great, 2013 Washington coaching staff that we have seen numerous head coaches in the NFL come from. He spent three years as a pro football focus analyst before being pulled back into the NFL by Kyle Shanahan. I respect the mind of Kyle Shanahan, and if he respects the mind of Bobby Slowick, well, that's all I have to say about that. And here's the thing. He didn't get pulled over to be on the offensive side of the ball in San Francisco. He got pulled over to be on the defensive side of the ball as a defensive quality control coach. He was that for two seasons, and then he moved over to offense. He rose up the ranks from an offensive assistant in San Francisco to the pass game specialist, to the passing game coordinator, before ultimately being hired by the Houston Texans to be their offensive coordinator this season. I mean, that is an incredible resume and a way to work up the system on both sides of the ball. And speaking of both sides of the ball, Bobby Slowick is an NFL kid. His father was a defensive coordinator in the NFL for four different teams. His dad still works as a defensive coach, linebacker coach, for the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League. So Bobby Slowick has an intimate understanding of the defensive side of the ball, of the offensive side of the ball, defensive control coach, father was a defensive coach, understands the business of the NFL because he grew up in it. And then, of course, we have seen what he is able to do on the offensive side of the ball with the talent available to him. So, to me, Bobby Slowick is the number one candidate for the Titans far and away. And let me address the critiques. I'm aware of the critiques of Bobby Slowick. A lot of people say he's not ready to be a head coach. And look, I will admit, he may not be the, and let's steal a draft term here. I hope you guys understand what I mean. He may not be the most pro-ready head coach in this circuit. I, or circuit. I think a guy like Ben Johnson may be a little more ready. Maybe a guy like Brian Callahan or Mike McDonald. They may be more ready to be head coaches. But if you're the Titans and you have a young roster that's going to be one of the youngest rosters 
in the NFL next year. You have a young quarterback in Will Levis. Let Bobby Slowick grow with the other young pieces. Bobby Slowick may be young and need to grow, but if you don't hire Bobby Slowick now and you let someone else hire him or you try to wait or you hire someone else and then Bobby Slowick gets hired next year, then you're going to miss out him out on him entirely. So he may not be as ready as some of the other coaches, but this is an investment in a youth movement for the Tennessee Titans. And that's why Bobby Slowick is my number one candidate. And after that performance against the Browns, there aren't as many people out there saying Bobby Slowick isn't ready. That's all I got to say about that. And I want to address this because last week in my comments, a lot of you guys are like, I'm tired of Houston Texans rejects. I'm tired of taking guys from the Texans. So you're telling me that he spent six, seven years in San Francisco in one year with the Texans, and now he's a Texans reject? I don't want to be like Houston. I want to be like San Francisco. So grow up with that. That's just absolutely silly to say that he's a Texan now because he spent one year there. Like, that's just terrible process and doesn't make any sense to think about things. If the best coach of all time was an assistant on the Texans, would you still not want him because he had one year with Houston? Doesn't make any sense. So the only other coach, and the Titans did request an interview with Bobby Slowick, so we'll see what happens there. But the only other coach that is in my tier one of candidates is Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator from the Detroit Lions. And look, again, he's probably the more ready coaching candidate out of the two. He's an older guy. He's got more experience. He's had more time as a play caller with the two years in Detroit. And you got to give Ben Johnson credit where the credit is due. I mean, they have good players in Detroit, but Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds look like studs when Mike Vrabel said, not only do we not think they're good players, we don't even want them. Get those guys off my team. All the while, the Titans had a terrible situation at wide receiver. And he made Josh Reynolds, not only did he want those guys on the team, he made them starters. So, Sam Laporta, one of the best rookie tight end seasons we've seen in a long time, utilizing Jameer Gibbs, hello, Tajay Spears, utilizing David Montgomery as a committee in Detroit. I mean, with the play-action system, he made Jared Goff look like Joe Montana with his play-action heavy system. So, that would fit perfectly, perfectly with Will Levis and this young offense. So Ben Johnson, far and away, Bobby Slowick and Ben Johnson, way above all the other candidates that I have on the list. I would explain it as this. These are my tier one options, okay? My tier one guys. So I would be over the moon, overly excited, incredibly happy, on Mars, you could even call it. This would be the ideal situation to get either Slowick or Ben Johnson. So those are my top two candidates. Let me know your top candidates down below. But now I want to go into my tier two candidates who I may not be over the moon, but I would still be very happy if they were hired by the Titans. So we're going to get into those now. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. I just bought tickets for a concert on Game Time last week. I love the Game Time app. It's the fastest easiest way to buy tickets, not just for music, not just for sports, but they have comedy, they have theater events, and I love all the features. They have great last-minute deals. They have these flash deals that pop up. They have all-in prices. You know when you're buying tickets that a lot of the time you'll see the price for the ticket, and then you go in to pay for it, and now each ticket is 60 or $70 more expensive than it was When you looked at it, you get an accurate view of your seat. You get a best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Again, I bought basketball, baseball, concert tickets on game time. Absolutely love it. And they have a game time guarantee where if you find seats in the same section, in the same row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code locked on, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Also, want to let you guys know about Jace Medical. I know that we come to sports 
to kind of escape from the realities of real life. But can we talk for just a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics, and that is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than my fiance, my nephew, mom, dad, sister, brother, or one of your kids getting sick while there's a supply chain issue that could keep them from life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial infections like UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, among others. And this stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed to you by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use the code Locked On for $20 off on your order. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We are doing my head coaching candidate tiers. I did tier one with Bobby Slowick at the top and Ben Johnson as a very close second. Now I want to get into my tier two. And again, I would be over the moon with tier one, but I would be very happy about tier two. Before we get into it again, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. This is the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. Free Monday through Friday on all apps. Get subscribed. Stay subscribed. I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers. Help me out here. Let's get this goal and we'll all celebrate it together. But with that being said, diving in to Tier 2. The number one name at the top of Tier 2 for me is Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator from the Cincinnati Bengals. The number one thing. The number one thing that stands out to me about Brian Callahan is his ability to put together a great coaching staff. Brian Callahan is the son of former head coach in the NFL and current offensive line coach Bill Callahan. So he has been in the, like Bobby Slowick, he is an NFL child. He has grown up in the NFL, which means he's going to have a ton of connections. He's going to have a vast network of talented coaches and assistants. He knows everyone around the NFL because he's grown up in the league. And there's a great chance that he could maybe bring his dad over to be an offensive line coach for the Titans, which with the youth on the offensive line, that is going to be absolutely critical to get a great offensive line coach for the Titans, which they haven't had in a long, long time. So that really appeals to me. And if you look at the other side of this thing, what was Mike Vrabel's downfall? I have said consistently, Mike Vrabel is a good coach. But he has his weaknesses. He has his blind spots. And the number one problem with Mike Vrabel is his inability to hire good coaches. He could not keep good coaches on his staff. He stayed with Craig Aukerman for a long time. And that cost the Titans multiple wins this season, having Aukerman a terrible special teams coach. He stuck with Todd Downing for two years. A lot of you guys have your complaints about Tim Kelly. Shane Bowen without uh, Jim Schwartz. Look like a different defensive coordinator. So Mike Vrabel's biggest downfall was his inability to continuously hire talented people on his coaching staff because he was more concerned, and he said this publicly, the number one thing about his coaching staff is loyalty. He wanted yes men. He wanted blind loyalty from his coaches. And that's just not what is going to work. And if you listen to Miss Amy talk in her interview after Vrabel was fired, she said it's not just about hiring the right head coach, it's about hiring the right coaching staff. So Bill Callahan really sticks out as a guy who could put together an excellent coaching staff, which may be what the Titans really want to do. Now Callahan hasn't called plays before, but Zach Taylor didn't call plays until he got hired. Bobby Slowick didn't call plays until he called plays. Ben Johnson didn't call plays until he called plays. You're inexperienced until you get experience. Okay, so pointing out that he hasn't called plays before doesn't really bother me. Okay, doesn't bother me. But moving on, number two in my tier two is Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. Also, one thing on Brian Callahan, great teacher. And I retweeted a video of Brian Callahan talking about what 
off what's important on offenses in the NFL. He talked about quarterback and outside wide receivers being able to make plays. Music to Titans fans' ears. But Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator from the Miami Dolphins, is renowned around the league for being a teacher, for being someone who can convey a message while being stern and coaching players hard, but also conveying a message to players that they can connect with. He tells them why he is coaching them this way, why he wants them to do things a certain way, and that is absolutely critical in today's NFL is connecting with your players. Frank Smith has gotten massive endorsements from around the NFL. And we want to talk about how important it is to get good offensive line coaching in the building with the offensive line. Frank Smith, former offensive lineman, former offensive line coach. He is a guy who is known for being an excellent offensive line developer. So having Frank Smith as your head coach with that specialty in offensive line, coming from a Miami Dolphins offense that is incredibly diverse, incredibly forward thinking, incredibly modern and innovative, Frank Smith, Frank the Tank, as I would call him, would be an excellent, excellent choice for the Tennessee Titans. Now, my last candidate in Tier 2 may make some people raise some eyebrows. It is Mike McDonald from the Baltimore Ravens. He is a defensive coordinator. And I know what you guys are saying. Tyler, you said you didn't want a defensive coordinator. You didn't want a defensive coach. How can you say that you'd be happy with Mike McDonald? And you guys are right. You guys are right. But when you're looking at the candidates I have in Tier 3, I would take Mike McDonald over those guys. And one thing that we just talked about with Mike Vrabel is the downside to Mike Vrabel was that he didn't put enough importance on hiring a talented coaching staff. He wanted his buddies. He wanted loyal guys who he knew from the past. If you look at Mike McDonald, he came from Michigan. He was Michigan's defensive coordinator under Jim Harbaugh. He was hired by John Harbaugh of the Baltimore Ravens. He has learned from those two guys how important having talent on your coaching staff actually is. And I've always said, not only my everydayers, shout out to you guys, but my every years know that I have said consistently Mike Vrabel should model his style and his system after John Harbaugh. Mike Vrabel is not a gifted schematic coach. Mike Vrabel is a CEO leader of men. And that's what John Harbaugh is. But John Harbaugh has the self-awareness and has a limited ego to where he's willing to admit, hey, I need to fire Greg Roman and Wink Martindale. And I need to go get the two most talented coaches out of college football. I'm getting Mike McDonald and I'm getting Todd Malkin. They may not be my guys and my buddies and guys who I have a ton of history with, but they are the most talented coaches available. And look what happened to the Ravens. They're the number one seed in the AFC now. So I believe that even though Mike McDonald is a defensive coach, that he would be a better coach than Mike Vrabel because he has the self-awareness and the ability to focus on talent on the coaching staff, not just guys who are blindly loyal to him and yes men. So that's why I would have Mike McDonald as my number five coaching candidate. He's in my top five at number five. I would prefer all the offensive guys we just talked about more. But I would take Mike McDonald over my tier three options because tier one, I would be over the moon. Tier two, I would be happy. And tier three, I would not be happy at all. So let's get into my tier three candidates right now. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, the NFL season, the regular season at least, is over, but it's playoff time, baby, and that makes it the perfect time to get in on the action at America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel. Plus, right now, new customers can get $150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right. Win or lose, just place a $5 bet and you're going to get 150 bucks in bonus bets. FanDuel is so easy to use. It actually looks fantastic as well. You got overs, unders, money lines, player props, single game parlays, live single game parlays. They got the parlay hub so you can find all the popular plays. Make sure that you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. It's FanDuel, official partner 
of the NFL. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. I am doing my head coaching tiers. Tier one, Bobby Slowick, Ben Johnson. Tier two, Frank Smith, um, Brian Callahan, and Mike McDonald. Now I want to get into my tier three, which as I said, these are coaches who I would not be happy, and I think it, I think it would be a mistake. And honestly, I would have to come on, come on here and take a defeat lap. Because I would not be happy with the head coaching candidates. Before I get into my tier three, do want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, so close to 10,000 subscribers. Help me get there. I appreciate it. But want to also let you know that Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked on Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts from Locked On like me. You get coverage from our national shows on every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. But with that being said, getting into Tier 3. And at the top of my list, the top of my list, In Tier 3, I would have to go with Antonio Pierce, the interim head coach for the Las Vegas Raiders. The Titans completed a virtual interview with Antonio Pierce over the weekend. I like Antonio Pierce. I think he has a chance to be a good head coach down the line. But at the end of the day, he is only at the top of my Tier 3. And the reasons, I don't want a defensive coach. And if I do get a defensive coach, I don't want an inexperienced coach like Antonio Pierce. Now. This is probably going to be a a moot conversation because we're getting reports that Antonio Pierce is going to be hired as the head coach for the Las Vegas Raiders. And that locker room might have revolted if they didn't. I mean, Max Crosby, one of the best players in the NFL, said that he's going to ask for a trade if they don't hire Antonio Pierce. So it's probably not going to be an option for the Titans. Perfectly fine with me. And the more head coaching openings that can be filled with guys who I'm not interested in, the better. Okay. The other name that's on my tier three is Eric Bieniemy, And I know a lot of you guys like Eric Bieniemy, And I think Eric Bieniemy is a very gifted offensive mind. No doubt about it. Okay. They missed him in Kansas City this year. And not just because of the offensive mind, but because Eric Bieniemy is known for giving tough love. He's a little harsh. He's a little rough around the edges, you could say. That's something that some players in Washington complained about early in the year when he was the OC of the Commanders. Ron Rivera even had to come out and address it publicly. Like, yes, Eric Bieniemy is a tough coach. He pushes guys hard. He is very critical. All of that. But at the end of the day, sometimes you need tough love. Sometimes you need a coach to push players and all that. So Eric Bieniemy is a, a brilliant mind but I just worry about having a guy who's a rough and tumble, gritty, you know, harsh coach because it, I compared this to your parents, all right? Dad is going to tell you when you make a mistake and you messed up and you're in trouble. He's going to maybe yell at you a little bit, send you to bed without supper, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then mom comes in afterwards and she rubs your back and tells you dad loves you. He just expects better from you. I love you, blah, blah, blah. You got to have that soft hand with the iron fist. And if Eric Bieniemy is your head coach with the iron fist, I just don't know that you're going to have a competent enough soft hand to balance that out. So it makes me worry. Again, they're in my tier three, so they're better than coaching candidates who aren't even in my list, but I still don't think I would be very happy with that hire. Um, Another guy is Mike Kafka. Kafka was or is the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants. And I know instantly what people are going to say. The New York Giants suck this year. Why would you want anybody from their offense? Well, would you have said that last offseason after he led Daniel Jones to a surprising year with terrible wide receivers, a mid-offensive line, and they got a playoff win? No, you would be like, oh, Mike Kafka is an up-and-coming candidate. He Look what he did with the Giants this year. You know what I mean? So I Mike Kafka is in my Tier 3. I do not want Mike Kafka, but at the end of the day, he is an offensive coach. He is a young guy who's up-and-coming, and I don't think that 
what happened with the Giants this year totally erases what that offensive staff was able to do with the Giants last year. You know what I mean? So Kafka is on my list. The Titans completed a virtual interview with him. But I just can't sit here and tell you that I would be happy with the hire. Uh, the next guy that I want to mention here is Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn is the defensive coordinator for uh, the Detroit Lions. And at the end of the day, a defensive coach, there's only one defensive coach that I have above Tier 3, and it's Mike McDonald. And Aaron Glenn's 51 years old, okay? And so not only is he a defensive coach, but... He's an older coaching candidate. And you're seeing guys in their 30s get hired here, seeing guys in their early... I mean, Mike Vrabel is 48 right now. Like, I, I, I don't want... You know, Mike McDonald, for example, is 36. McDonald's 15 years younger than Aaron Glenn. So with him being a defensive coach and him being an older candidate who's older than Mike Vrabel... I just don't think that's what you need in the NFL nowadays. So that's why Aaron Glenn is not only in my tier three, but lower than those other the other three guys that I mentioned. Uh, the last guy that I'm going to mention here is Shane Waldron. Uh, I like Shane Waldron. He's the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. You look at the Seahawks' youth on the offensive line, obviously that's appealing. He took two rookie offensive tackles last year, second-year offensive tackles this year, young interior offensive line. He took those guys and was able to build a competent offense. He revived Geno Smith's career. He showed that he can use good wide receivers like DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, a rookie, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. He utilized a great backfield with Kenny Walker and Zach Charbonnet. The Titans will probably have Tajay Spears and maybe another rookie. So, again, he knows how to use young players, and the Seattle Seahawks offense has been impressive at times. So, Shane Waldron is another guy who I would have on that list. And then, finally, I want to say Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson is the offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. I liked Brian Johnson as an option to be the offensive coordinator for the Titans last year, run a heavy RPO system in Philadelphia, which I think would have really helped the Titans deal with how aggressively defenses were playing them. The Titans needed more RPO in their offense this year, in my opinion, and Brian Johnson would absolutely be able to deliver that. Former college quarterback, former college play caller, now has play calling experience in the NFL. I know things weren't perfect in Philadelphia this year, and that's why he's in my tier three of candidates. But I think in a couple of years, whether it be next year or the year after that, Brian Johnson will get an opportunity to be a head coach in the NFL. So kind of like with Bobby Slowick, it's one of those things where you may make an investment, but I still think it would be too risky with Brian Johnson, and that's why he's in my tier three. So Play along with me down below. Let me know what your tier list is. Let me know what your top candidate is. Really excited to see what you guys have to say about that. But that's the end of today's show. Before we go, shout out to my brother, Drew, man. I love you. Happy birthday. Been riding this Titans train a long time. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.